Bruce Jansen of the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium with Dr. Jose Baselga of Boston. Dr. Baselga, what are the clinical implications of Cleopatra? There are several. I think the first one is that we have now a new standard, uh, likely to be a new standard in the first line setting in patients with HER2 positive metastatic disease. So that's an obvious one. The second one is that uh, we have ongoing efforts at uh, moving this to the adjuvant setting. So we have already started a large worldwide adjuvant study called Affinity, in which we're basically building on the same principle. So uh, patients are being randomized to conventional Herceptin-based therapy plus minus, um, plus minus uh, pertuzumab. And this study is already enrolling. So that's the second point. I think there is a bigger theme, if you wish, and that's the role of dual HER2 blockade in the therapy of, um, of HER2 positive disease. And now we have data with Herceptin and Lopatinib and Herceptin and Pertuzumab, and shortly um, we'll have solid data with TDM1 and Herceptin, or TDM1 and Pertuzumab even, um, I meant TDM1 and Pertuzumab, not TDM1 and Herceptin, that will likely change the way we approach this disease. And I think down the line, and that's not for today, but down the line, uh, you could see a future in which chemotherapy could be even uh, be eliminated uh, in some situations in patients with her 2 positive disease. So there's so a lot of changes occurring uh, with this data. And there's also interest in uh, combining everolimus with trastuzumab? Uh, that this is a very interesting combination. So there is preliminary data in a non-randomized fashion in which Everolimus can revert resistance to Herceptin. Uh, the data is published. And there are two large randomized trials uh, in advanced disease that are just checking this. So we should have this data pretty soon as well. Um, I could see that working. Uh, it makes a lot of sense. So that it's likely to be a positive trial. And then on top of that, we have a new family of anti-cancer therapies that we're working, which are inhibitors of the phosphoinositol kinase 3, which is upstream of mTOR. And those agents could even be better than, than Everolimus down the line. So, yeah, so it, we're going to be combining all these pathway inhibitors in one way or the other.